What's up, guys? Welcome to the Stuistoid Podcast. We're here at the home studio again for another edition of your favorite local podcast. I'm here with... Your boy Sudden. Your boy Sudden. Where can they find you on all platforms, my guy? I'm on everything. Spotify, Apple Music, you name it. I'm on everything. Sudden is an artist who makes R&B music for the ladies. <laughs> uh, yeah. Brings ladies to the shows, too? Yes. <laughs> That's the goal. What's up, Sudden? How you feeling, man? I'm chilling. How you doing, man? I'm good. I'm good. What's up, bro? So tell the, tell the people a little bit about yourself. Where are you from? So, see, I hate this question because... I, I'm from a lot of different places. I I grew up I grew up in Chicago. I grew up in Indiana. I grew up, you know what I'm saying? Downtown. Round, 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 round. I get around. Bro. <laughs> moved to moved to the moved to the burbs. I've been in a couple of different suburbs. So I'm kinda from everywhere. So I I just like to live my life kinda like that. I don't Where know, you at I now? Claim anything. I'm in Aurora right now though. Okay. They call it A Town. I don't know sure. about that. So what got you into music? Um, so I was in choir in high school. So I started in choir, freshman year, bass course, Matia Valley. Everybody know that. Um, so I stayed in, in pretty much all my high school, all my high school career. I was doing sports. I was doing high, uh, music. I was doing that. I was in the acapella group. Um, and at the end of the day, like, that was interesting to me. I don't even know how I got it in my schedule. <laughs> right. My freshman year, I just had music. I was just going. The was acapella like, okay, group, that's like the hand-picked group that they do. Mm-hmm. With the, I think yeah. ours is called, yep. ours was Cloud Nine. That's Cloud Nine, yeah. yeah. Show. So it was, uh, ours is called Apollo. The, the Patty Bulgers, yeah. the Jimmy Bulgers of the world. <laughs> ours is called Apollo. So yeah, we tried for Apollo. Um, and it was, I think it was 12 of us, maybe 10, 12 of us. I don't remember the specifics. I'm not going to lie. But yeah, it was a dope experience being able to do that. Um, especially acapella, bro. Acapella, if if you have any vo- kind of a voice, bro, I would recommend you try acapella. Okay. Some kind of acapella group, for sure. But that's what got me into it's it. Kind of like that Beach Boy song we were just singing where they all harmonize. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, they, they don't even, yeah for real. Cool, cool. Yeah, that's what's up. Mm-hmm. Damn, so it's just the 90 all on the stage and y'all make a whole pretty much song. Literally. Nine we, voices, yeah, we the create the song. Yeah, the melody, for sure. Right. Everything. The beatboxing, Sheet, everything, yeah. bro. It's, it's a dope experience. So, with that being said, I think you'll have a little bit of a different answer than usual people, but uh, okay. who do you look up to in the music industry? <sighs> yeah, I'm not gonna lie. Who are your inspirations when you were so, growing up? Like, what are the artists you would listen to? Obviously, growing up, um, I was, I'm was i a fan of just music in general, so I can listen to pretty much anything. So as long as, as, long as it sounds good to me, um, it's gonna be in my playlist or it's gonna be in my phone. So I listened to, growing up, the Lil Wayne's of the world, yeah. the, I'm from the rap side, the Drake's, obviously I like the Drake's, Kendrick Lamar, J. Cole, all of them, BBL Drizzy, I guess, <laughs> but yeah. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I listen to pretty much, I listen to everything, um, but my, my favorite artist right now is Black. I know y'all know Six Black, Black. That's my boy. I ain't like he, he. That's a oh, lot of my inspiration. Man, like they call me six Bro, like oh. what? <laughs> uh, Don Tolliver. That man don't mm. miss. I ain't gonna lie. I need a collab for sure. Uh, I could see something like that. So, what are your goals for music in 2024? And uh, what are your goals in the next five years? In general, my goal is just to spread positivity. I'm sharing my a side of me that I otherwise probably wouldn't wouldn't. And music kind of allows me to do that in a different way that I also thought probably wouldn't be doing. So it's actually kind of a dope experience to create something and be able to hear it like in its entirety and know that everything in there, like you individually did. You know what I mean? Like that's your creation. Yeah. Like you made that. Right. That's a dope experience. And All to be the able to through, share that. Yeah. All the way through to performing it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Being able to share that experience with other people. I think that's the most important thing for me. So just spreading positivity, just being able to um, impact at least one person. If I can impact one other person to be positive and to, to just vibe, you know what I mean? Like that's that's kind of how I live. Cool. Sure. Where do you see yourself in five years with music? And if the world works was your perfect, way? I would have a consistent fan base, a steady fan base, just people that vibe with me, that rock with me. Touring. 
You know what I'm saying? Doing whatever I do. You know what I mean? We gonna, I'm trying to build a community of people, of like-minded listeners. What are you talking about in your music when, when you go to make a song? Mm -hmm. And I guess that's kind of a broad question, but um, in your recent songs that you've been making or maybe some of the stuff that's not released that you are working on, what are some of the things that you're talking about or what, um, where's your mindset when you're going into making you know, a song nowadays? When I was making Vigilant though, the goal throughout re the recording sessions was to be as personal as possible really and hard, to bro. talk about really more relating to me and what I went through mm -hmm. and actual situations rather than situational feelings, which I feel like mm. those other yeah. three albums, it was situational feelings, but then on the last album, it, it was like personal. Like, and you hear it on songs like Fun Tonight, Dad, Over You. Yeah, for sure. But this isn't about me. Yeah, for um, sure. No, you good, bro. Yeah, so that's my process nowadays. It's a little more personal. And now I'd say I'm more in um, a headspace of metaphoric punchlines. Yeah. And I kind of stepped away from the melodic side. Like the last three or four times I was in the studio, I was either like screaming while in rapping. Yeah. I was rapping, rapping. Oh, you was, or you was doing you was different on some boom bap so like the new yeah, YouTube sure. exclusive I uh -huh. put out. I, I was rapping. It's definitely a, a process, though. I will say that, uh, especially for me, bro, because like, I'm not the type to to be a freestyle. You know what I mean? Like that's not me. Mm -hmm. I try sometimes. It's cool, right. but you know what I mean. But like that's just not my style. So at the end of the day, like um, how I kind of construct my songs is based off of how I feel in that moment. Um, right. And essentially, how can I make this relatable enough a broad to, audience. Even, yeah, to, to a broad audience for sure? Yeah, it's yeah. hard to explain, but it's definitely fun because I get to experience and I get to, to challenge myself on, on things that I probably wouldn't do in any other situation. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. not only that, but challenge my voice because like I've always had a weird feeling about my voice. You know what I mean? So I I personally try to make those changes like all the time i try to make right. as, as many changes as i can and then when i do that i i can see a different experience in my music you know what i mean because mm -hmm. i'm more relatable um i feel like it's i'm just more into it you know what i mean yeah and i just be i just be in there trying shit bro i'm not like <laughs> nowadays and e-man can attest to this shit. more more nowadays this year i can go in there and have a note or two like Maybe like a hook written, but then when it came yeah. to the verse, if I just more or less this year put my phone down, and just kind of close no, my eyes and think about no, it. Just what? Go um, ahead. It ends up being something that I didn't think it would be. Me and Dave were putting out an EP from that. For sure. From that weekend when he was in town, and that was the day after the uh, RMRP show. My voice was raspy as hell. <laughs> I had to go in there and make it work. I sounded like shit. Yeah. The songs aren't exactly where I want them to be. We're going to put them out because it's just all about the experience of the whole thing. It was such a rush process and we only have this weekend to do it. And that was yeah. kind of the whole goal behind it. And I don't know if you can relate to this at all, but have you ever written a song where you go back and listen to it? And it could be intentional where you play it or not intentional. It could be like a year or two later. Yeah. And for some reason it relates to you in the future yes when you wrote it back in the moment yes. and you're just kind of sitting there like damn that's crazy you know yeah. <laughs> that just happened that actually just happened in my ep the damn. song oc bro that's exactly what happened. that song i dropped it last year last summer um 2023 and but the songs on there really now were like no bro those songs were from like 2020 uh, you know what i mean like four years prior and i just heard them again and i was like dude what <laughs> yeah. Yeah. i remember and then i remixed them and stuff like that and yeah i had to drop it bro you, you said lil wayne's of the world but uh, what, yeah. what what can we hear from your music that you really took uh, you know from a childhood of artists you were listening to definitely like definitely chris brown usher you know what i mean I, I wasn't really much of a dancer, but like, I tried to dance, but it was cool. You know what I mean? It, it is what it is. We're not going to go there. <laughs> but uh, nah, uh, yeah, they, they're heavy inspirations for sure in terms of their music. And whenever I say somebody's an inspiration, especially in my music career, it's like not even just, not specifically their character, even though sometimes that can play into it too, but like at the same time, 
Like you, I feel like I just want to be able to ex enjoy somebody's music because they created that and, and put it out there. You know what I mean? Um, but at the end of the day, Don Tolliver, like I said, all of them, you can hear them in my music. You can hear definitely black. I, I think I want to, I'm getting more into exploring the lyrical side of myself um, instead of just the melodic side because I feel like that's that's more the, more so the easy part. You know what I mean? And just relying on that, I don't want to, you know what I mean? I, I want to be able to explore my emotions in terms of actually articulating you know what I mean? Yeah. While also making it sound like, like it needs to sound. Yeah. You know what I mean? So besides the two RMRP shows, what are some things that you've been a part of in the last 12 months or maybe even coming up that um, you would say were staples or important moments in your career? Yeah, so my f I actually just started performing, I think it was in January. That was my, f my first performance. That, that was... Um, a big milestone for me because I had never performed on my own. Obviously, I was performing a cappella, choir, and stuff like that, and I performed before. But to perform your own music, that's a whole different thing. Right. So yeah, that was kind of like a, a confidence builder for me to be able to just do that. Cause like, who goes up there by themselves and then you putting out basically your feelings, yourself, right? You the most, you at your most vulnerable, I think, right? And so to be able to do that. And still have fun and vibe, you know what I mean? That's a that's a dope experience. So, starting to get into um, doing a lot more shows, starting to get into actually experiencing, uh, talking to fans and people that actually want to hear my music and enjoy my music. That's a dope experience to, for somebody to tell you that they enjoy what you right. play. You know what I mean? That's so cool. So, so yeah, I get off stage after, you, and a lot of times if it's like a shit showcase and the crowd's just kind of like standing around or whatever, I'll get off the stage and. Five, six, seven people come up to me, dab me up. I have no idea who they are. <laughs> right, but they're like, oh, what's your Instagram? What's this? Let's take a picture. And that's always a good feeling yeah. on my end where I feel like I did what I had to do when, you know, there were umpteen guys that went before me, but nobody came up to them. Yeah, and it's sure. no shade on them. I mean, yeah. I just feel like we're all at different artist development points. And... Where I'm at, year seven, year eight, and always trying to stay ahead of the ball that's rolling behind me. I still feel like I'm almost getting ran over by the ball, even though I'm doing so much. And when I do perform, and I show in the shows, when it pays off, when people come up to me after, that's when it pays off for me, or when yeah. you know whatever bullshit I did sure. do to get there. You know, it could be in the city. Like one time we get a flat tire two minutes from the venue and then we just got to eat it and go in because we're already late. But like, what do Deal you with it doing? after. Yeah. It's still, you know, you have to like rub it off. Just still have a good performance. Like, still have shit fun. happens. You know what I'm saying? It still have fun. And I think it's it's important to know like the the artist connection afterwards too. Like with other artists, that's a dope experience too. To be able to to share that with other artists who also create, they understand what you do. You know what I mean? So like. That's also a dope experience. That's a whole different. Right. <laughs> they gotta be willing though. Yeah, they be for leaving sure. and shit after their yeah. set. <laughs> for sure. So, tell us, what do you like to consume? What is your favorite food, my guy? What are you whipping up? Late night snack. Uh, if you gotta, uh, you know. My favorite. Get, get broad with it. Favorite type of food is pasta. Okay. Sure. You gotta have some pasta, bro. Yeah. Pasta for Come on, bro. The pasta, bro. What? Yeah. Um, pasta. I mean, so look. <laughs> food for me is kind of weird because I used to be really picky. Like, I used to be a picky eater. I went to college and basically life was beating my ass. So I had to <laughs> figure out what, you other shit, eat. what I'm going to eat. You know what I mean? Other shit that I'm going to eat. And usually the shit that I wanted was either Too not far. very... Access easily accessible, you know what I mean? Like it's it's just not happening. So like you gotta you gotta eat, bro. You still gotta eat. <laughs> Might as well try some shit. Yeah, and then, yeah, this. so now now I can pretty much eat a lot of different things, but yeah, just nothing spicy. You hear <laughs> you hear me something spicy, bro? I'm gonna beat your ass. You don't do the cholula. <laughs> what you say? You don't do the cholula no. or, or the uh, no. sriracha. You do. Like, that's what you I fuck with sriracha Cholula's what's your, what's your good What's your big tolerance bro You, you can I like hot wings 
Okay. I was looking, like with some ranch. I don't know how people can eat ranch because if you're going <laughs> to serve wings with ranch, I don't want to do business with you. You're going to show up with that ranch that smells like somebody's ass. You ever smell They're fucking ranch? That. It's either blue cheese with wings or go fuck your mother. <laughs> give me a fucking uh, ranch with fucking wings. I can say, fucking going to give me ranch with my wings. Fuck up now. Don't order that shit around me. Do me that favor, all right? I could do like Cholula on my eggs or like an, uh, like a... Ooh. A fried egg in my ramen with some hot with some sriracha. Ooh. Why not? That's that's that's, 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 that's my that's, fight, that's my BNG meal. Yeah. BNG broke nigga game. <laughs> egg yeah, cheap as hell. Yeah, ramen cheap as, cheap as hell. Everybody got that dark red sriracha can in their pa pantry. I'm just <laughs> mix it up. We got a good time. Bro, <laughs> bro not the hot sauce though, bro. Come uh, on, man. Little lemon. Hot sauce on fish or tacos? No. Yeah, hot like sauce. the spicy uh, salsa. I used to hate, okay. bro, I used to be picky too, right? But, like, I still hate yeah. onions to this day. I cannot do a raw onion. <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I can do I a can fried, do like, those little stringy onions that they put on the burgers. Yeah. Those are fire. I can do uh, grilled those, onions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. or like an onion ring. That's yeah. cool, right? But, like, do not put onions in my guac. Don't put onions on my burger. Don't put onions in my taco. I'm just different. Because You're different. tweaking. That's why your farts sound the way they do. <laughs> I don't even like. I'm not gonna. Lie, I don't even like guac. So it's, it's crazy. I just got into that type of like. Really? That's I just eat bullshit. Just same bullshit. Yeah, for sure. But Favorite I, movie? Not, oh. Okay. So look, I know. I know Shia LaBeouf. Wow, <laughs> bro. But Transformers, bro. That. That's a classic, bro. Transformers is a hit. My favorite, uh, damn, I'm trying to think of another movie that I like. Favorite movie? I know Shia LaBeouf Wild. <laughs> nah, I think Transformers definitely would have to take it. Oh, Fast and Furious. I like that franchise. Okay. Up until up until seven. After seven, it kind of get a little. You know what I'm saying? Eight was, eight was mediocre. It was decent. Meds. It was decent. After that, yeah, I don't lie. Nine and ten let me down. I I don't know about that. I like horror movies. Oh, okay. I, I don't like the Michael Bay big explosion. I don't want to say I don't like them. I could sit through them. Yeah. But if I had to put a horror, like if I had to put a genre at the top of my list, it's horror. And if I had to get into like what's my favorite, I probably couldn't even tell you. If I had a favorite action movie yeah. though, I think I said this before, Dark Knight. The one that they Ooh. shot in Chicago, New Ooh, York. Yeah, bro. What I was like, oh, wait. Dark Knight. That's Heath Ledger. That one's tough. One's Heath tough Ledger, one. bro. What's your favorite place to record music at? Uh, studio, the house, lay it on us. I'm not going to lie, bro. I do everything in the studio. At the studio? Yeah. Like an actual in, studio? No, 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 no. In at, my, at your house? In the house, yeah. Okay. Everything in the house. Okay. Sure. It's always interesting. Yeah. I just try to, I'm always the type to want to learn how to You do mix something. it, too? Yeah. Mm. So I'm I, I I'm always trying to learn, you know what I mean. So every every time it's a it's a learning process. Every time I drop a song, I got better from the last song. Man, the mixing, don't get me started. <laughs> That's all. I'm not gonna do it. No, and, by, and it's crazy because by, by the time the song dropped, I didn't heard the song so much, I don't even want to hear it. Like I listened to it for about a week, and then I never hear it again. I couldn't tell you the last time I heard a, a misplaced, not misplaced EP, which is out on all platforms, by the way. <laughs> so, what are you playing when you get in the car if you're not listening to any of your old music, or you know, you get in the car, you're you're at the gym, you plug, you put those headphones on. I listen to, I, bro, I listen to a lot of different things. I'm not gonna lie, my my mood changes a lot. <laughs> so I listen to anywhere from, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I'd probably be listening to some some like ensemble music, like some actual like choir music sometimes. <laughs> Other times I'll be listening to uh, Key Glock. I'll be listening to Young Dolph, you know what I'm saying? Another time I'll be listening to Kendrick, J. Cole, or, and then Erica Badu sometimes, and then Black, and then obviously, you know what I mean? But like Get around. then I have my modes where I'm like, I'm just listening to, I'm just listening to beats, bro. You know what I'm saying? Just getting my head, constantly getting my head working, constantly trying to figure some shit out. That's always the vibe. Real. <laughs> so, who's your favorite music producer then, uh, personally and industry? Like you hear a new, you hear so and so, yeah. and this guy producer made a beat, I mean, made a song together. Uh, I'm li you, you're hopping on that. Let's I'm just hear gonna it. lie, bro. <laughs> 
we got to talk about the we got to talk about Metro, bro. You Metro. Can't, you can't not talk about Metro when you talk about producers. Okay. Metro hard. With the ensemble, with the with the uh, car, he was do, make, doing a beat. You know yeah. the live performance. I seen. I was like, yeah. Like, he over. Got, he got it. Bro. It's over. <laughs> it's over. He got it, bro. <laughs> he good, bro. He's straight. So, yeah. yeah. He disappeared for a while, yeah, like yeah. 2018 to like mm -hmm. 22, yeah. and then he did like the Spider Verse shit, and uh -huh. she showed he grew his hair out, and he went because when he was yeah, sure. popping, popping, he didn't have no hair, and then he popped back out on the scene. Nigga had like the light colored dreads and the so right different. Yeah, though. what the hell? I don't know. I don't know how you can. It's really, it's crazy. It's really people out here that's like that talented. Yeah, he had that like, beat in his head. Yeah. Like, how did like you thought of that nigga? Like, what? <laughs> Who are you, bro? That's how I feel when I listen to Kanye West. Yes, bro. Like, what? Yeah, old Kanye. Go, go, I think go, Kanye go. West is my favorite producer by far. Yeah, Kanye. Yeah, Kanye different, bro. I mean, right. old albums. Yeah, I and mean, it's like he's got people like P Tip. He's got you know what I mean. He's got motherfuckers in there helping him do it, and then yeah. Like Dang, you listen to the vultures and he's like, okay, well I produced all this. Or, he had help from motherfuckers, but certain ones like Burn, mm -hmm. Vultures, mm -hmm. um, Carnival. Is that when he go, her body like the world? Yeah, but there's a lot of ones on there with the beats. Steal it. Fuck what they're saying. <laughs> Fuck what they're saying. Nah, I don't lie, bro. Uh, you you hear the story with uh, Kanye uh, said, uh, took his song to, to Jamie Foxx. He was trying to get on the song. He was trying to be all soulful and shit like that. Kanye was like, nah, bro. <laughs> Say it like that. And Kanye was nobody at this mo at this time, bro. So, like, Jamie Foxx was like, who the fuck? Like, I do this shit, but, like, he, they put the song out, nigga. Everybody was going crazy for that song, bro. I don't remember what song that shit is. What's that? Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh. She said she wants some Marvin Gaye to do the fan drops. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, man. What? <laughs> what do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean? Yeah. Yeah, that nigga Kanye. That nigga Kanye. Oh my God. So different, bro. You can't tell me nothing. But today I found out you are in fact a chiefer. Indeed. You know I'm a chief. Yes, sir. So, answer me this. Riddle me this. Yes. What's your favorite way to smoke? Okay, so Legonge. I'm trying to stay away from blunts. You know what I'm saying I'm trying. I'm trying to stay away from the blunts. Away. I'm trying to just. You know what I'm saying I'm starting getting some papers and stuff like that. I might start doing that instead. But you know I still smoke blunts. But <laughs> I'm I'm trying not to do it for sure. Me personally, on the daily, I will enjoy a couple joints, but for uh, sure. like this weekend, this last weekend, we when we when we were at that film studio. Mm -hmm. Uh, we went to go walk to the Popeyes to get food. There was one worker in there, and she wasn't answering through the. Mich don't worry, this will get back to smoking. <laughs> this will get back to smoking. Sure. Wasn't answering the you dig. So we walk up to the window, and I'm knocking on it. She comes up to the window. She's like, "Honey, I'm the only one working." She's like sweating head to toe. Like I'm talking Aunt your mama. <laughs> Thick. At the Wendy's? I don't know, at the Popeyes oh, by Popeyes. herself. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Not a day under 50. Yeah. Old, and, and let me mind you, <laughs> there's like 40 pounds of chicken in the metal bales under the heater thing, just like ready to go. And I'm like, nobody's coming here. Why is all this food ready? Regardless, <laughs> she's not serving us. Yeah. I'm hungry. I just want a chicken sandwich. <laughs> you said, I need it's not food, happening. Man. I see a BP uh, adjacent. Yeah. So um, let's go, let's go get. Ghetto gas station snacks. We're off. I don't even know what neighborhood. Austin, somewhere <laughs> fucked up, bro. And we're walking to the gas station. The security guard, the glass window. You know, I grab my two for a dollar chips. I grab the uh, little strawberry wafers. My little Bev. <laughs> Can't forget the Bev. Never, never, Can't never. The Bev. Never, never, so never. So I check out. And I'm checking out. She's like, oh, 597, you know, and fucking um, I'm looking behind them. And I see banana, vanilla, grape, all of them, bro. <laughs> Megalig, all of them, bro. Yeah. I said, Nilla, give me a Nilla. And my total went, my total did go from 597 to almost $20. God damn. <laughs> but. God damn. But I did enjoy myself some Nilla Wack backwards the last okay. few days. 
That's what's up. Um, <laughs> on the occasion, I will use a joint. It's always the back of it. Bro. You see the glass collection by the printer down there. That's yeah, bro. I seen that. I seen about that. what I'm working with. <laughs> Who's uh, your favorite Chicago artist? Does it matter what genre? No, from here. That's the. I don't know. Who's yours? Me personally. Inspiration and and I honestly it's hard for me to not name five. Yeah. But if I absolutely had to do th okay. In no specific order either. G Herbo. Of course. Kanye West. Okay. Um Juice. I was waiting. I was gonna do that one last. <laughs> Keith, <laughs> Keith is a nut. Keith is a nut. Come on, bro. just no. I'm like even on was, even on all my so like, too. You gotta mention Keith, but at the same no, time. No, no, yeah. I was I was say I was saving I was saving Juice and Keith, but like yeah. inspirational to me. Yeah. If I only had to say three, I'd say Herb, Yay, and the fifth one would be <laughs> like Common or Twista. Just because Twisted was so different. Just because bro. they they weren't Twisted like was so different. They weren't like what am I trying to say? Yeah, they were very independent. Damn, like, yeah, they worked with the labels and stuff. But like the people that were working those labels were like the the founders and the original founders and their homies and like you got Fat Joe and all these motherfuckers yeah, that sure. were owning the labels and doing the shit. It's not sure. like nowadays where it's like so and so's uncle was running it and I'm fucked and I'm in this deal. Yeah, Keith, I know, I ain't gonna lie. Keep, put some respect on Keith, bro. Chief Keith, bro. That's my boy. But nah, I'ma say Kanye. For sure. any, any words for the camera, Lou? Wait, what'd you say? I'ma say Kanye. For sure. Top five. Top five? No specific order? Yeah, definitely Herb. Herb, I love Herb. Uh, Southside on the track. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie. Uh, Kanye, of course. Shout out Oz, man. Shout out, shout out the homie, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I fuck. I ain't gonna lie. I, I fuck with Chance, bro. I fuck with the old Chance. I ain't gonna lie. Uh, Juice, obviously. Um, that's my nigga, bro. Juice, bro. Juice, he don't miss. See, I, I, always, I have yet to yeah. hear a, a bad song from Juice World, bro. I always want to include Chance on my shit. Yeah. But it's like there's nothing inspirational. Like I, I fuck with him as a person. I like what yeah. he does. Yeah. And um, oh, I fuck with him as a person. I like what he does, but. There's nothing inspirational there for me besides acid rap. Yeah, for like sure. don't get me wrong, coloring books good. I like yeah. Smoke Break. Yeah. There's some good ones on there. Yeah, for but sure. like that coloring book was like his teeter between what he did on acid rap and the heap of garbage that was coming after yeah, coloring book. You sure. know what I mean? Like yeah, mm, yeah, but man, I, that's where you lost me. He it's just because like he had such a an impact like when he was hot, bro. Like. I remember being in high school, bro, and everybody was listening to Chance, bro. Everybody was listening to Acid Rap. Everybody. Everybody. There's not one person who wasn't listening to Acid Rap. No specific order. After, after three, really, it doesn't, like, everybody's like, you know what I mean? No, no specific order. Went for the fucking love of my last one, too. Okay. Nobody ever says him, but right. you gotta put some respect on his name. All right. All right. Number one, I'm gonna go with my boy Kanye. Shout out Kanye. Number two, Juice. Three, gotta go Herb. Herb. No specific order, but I'm just saying like that. For sure. Keith, shut up, shut out Sosa, and then five, like five is ludicrous, bro. Ludicrous is from Illinois, and he is cold. And don't nobody put respect on my nigga's name. <laughs> Luda, shout out Ludicrous, hey, bro. Yeah, kept blasting him on the top. But I don't give a fuck. Shout out Luda, bro. I'm, 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 uh, look, he, Luda, but, Luda but, 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 but. Luda but all the bullshit, I'm talking about his music. Okay, before he got into whatever the fuck he's into. Luda that nigga had some bars, bro. I need you to listen to the Cat Williams Club no, Shay. I ain't gonna Crazy. lie. He's like, I have it written in my contract as an addendum that Marlon Wayans cannot be in a movie with me unless he's wearing a dress. Nigga, Steve Harvey, he was out on everybody. Man. Three and a yeah. half hours sitting there. He's like, oh, Crazy. and what you don't know about. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm gonna remix it. We gonna go. <laughs> we gonna go. Juice World, Chief Keef, Herb, Kanye, Just Do It. I didn't put him on there. I didn't put him on there because I, I was gonna be a little biased, but sure. that's my dog. So sure. we gonna put Just Do It on there because he's that. Check him out.
put me on notice the right plan. Yes, sir. Oh God. Oh, quick that. story time. Yeah. yeah sure. Before I ask you one more. <laughs> um, in April of last year, um, my mom's birthday is like a couple of days after 4:20 or whatever. Yeah. Um, we had a studio session, and this is when uh, Tree. This is when uh, Glass Tree with CB and Justin were. They were on 23rd in Michigan. Yeah. I lived on 18th in Michigan. Like two minute walk to Soldier Field, two minute walk to Grant Park, one yeah. stop south to Sox. Like we were in the middle of the city, dude. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, I used to live in a place called Sky 55. It's like, I think it's right next to, I think it's right next to uh, Millennium Park. Okay. We probably so. passed by the yeah, building before. Sure. Yeah, it's, it's like dead smack in the middle though. Either way, I'm in a condo building. Uh, private landlords the lady didn't i was renting it out um i'm on the fifth floor and there's a balcony ceiling to floor windows we go to the studio we pretty much could walk there but we drove and parked yeah um we were there from whatever time until was it Four to ten. 11 yeah. 5 to 11 um, we went there from 5 to 11, and it was my mom's birthday weekend, and at the time she lived at my uh, great grandma, or at my grandma's house and um, with my little brother, and she wanted to get out of the house for her birthday weekend, so I said she can come over to my place. And if she, at the time, I also had a dog for about three to four weeks at this point. It was a, a puppy. Her name was Skye. She's oh, a Sky. Literally. Pitbull. Um, little puppy girl, oh, yeah. a little girl. Um, she was sweet though. She was just like you know how you'd expect. Too much energy, high energy for these cats that are siblings, and you know, um, just kind of like disrupted things. And I went to the studio. Um, my mom was watching all the animals, the two cats and the dog. And I told her, you know, if you're gonna fall asleep or you know not hold on to her, or, like pay attention, you gotta lock her up. And shop, they will my mom was doing, I don't even know what, because look, here's the thing. I'm telling the story, but whole time I wasn't even there. So I, I can't look, I, cause we're at the studio. I can't give you a straight up story. I'm going to tell you, gotcha. come on, stop. I'm going to tell you like what I know and like what I think happened, but, um, or what the information that I received. So, sure. um, the screen door is like open. The screen doors and the door is open. So the screen door is there. I'm not sure what happened all in all, but all I'm going to say is there was a hole in the bottom of the screen. The dog wasn't in the cage. This cat tried to get off of the cat tree. Something obviously happened. Um, my cat ended up on the other side of my balcony, like of the glass. What? Supposedly, my mom tried to grab her and. <laughs> Uh, she like squirmed and the cat fell from the fifth floor to the third floor where there was um a terrace like a uh, overhang and she fell there and broke her front left leg and then crawled onto somebody's balcony and i wasn't able to get her back until three in the morning because the lady wouldn't whose balcony she was on didn't believe me we didn't open the but door what? the police wouldn't come and help because it was a cat instead of like a person or a dog no <laughs> fire department i didn't have a ladder home depot was closed so i pretty much had to make like a disruption and like start trying to punch holes in the wall and kick this lady's door down to get the police to show up open up yeah i need help <laughs> Showed, showed my ID to this bitch and everything, like, wouldn't open the door. I lived two floors directly above you. Yeah, you are. And um, the cops came. They went into her place. Two seconds later, my cat came walking out, like, limping. Dripping. Yeah, like, like bugging out, like, like the leg like this. And, this one? And um, when I was in the e ER, that. and they gave her a wrap. And then the next day, she got surgery. Oh, yeah. yeah. It was, like, where the scar was. Bro, what? And um, they put like a metal she plate in her arm. And um, she was in a cast for a few weeks. I'd take her once a week to that's get checked up. Yeah, that's wild. And uh, yeah, she got, the, she got the surgery and everything. And now she's good. She jumps around and plays and okay, acts like it didn't happened. happen. But she was only like two at the time. So I felt like shit. Now she's <laughs> three. And like I, we were at the studio. Probably and we went remember. back. And I got to figure it out. And he was up all night. It was bad. She probably don't even remember. She's she, she's appreciative. Okay, yeah. She was not as nice as she is. Okay, now. yeah. For sure. Yeah, she's a nicer cat now. So, 
usually we relate this to something back in the episode but we kept it pretty broad today it was more about you so i'll just ask you straight up if you had one positive message to give to the public or anybody watching this what do you got to say to them They're having a bad day bad bad week even you know what's some advice we you got for him son we human man it's always gonna be something going wrong it's always gonna be something happening life is never gonna be perfect you know what I mean? But we all human. We all experience in that one way or another. You know what I mean? So, like, at the end of the day, positivity is the only thing that's going to keep us keep us going. You know what I mean? Like, if we're not, if we not speaking positive to each other, there's no point, bro. Because we're just going to... It would be so much easier for us to help each other rather than to hurt each other. You know what I mean? So, like, at the end of the day, bro, mind your business, first and foremost. <laughs> You know what I mean? Stay in your lane, but at the same time, like, everybody's respect everybody. Bone thugs. Bone thugs. Bone, 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 bone. Stuart Stoyd family, June 15th. We in Aurora, we at the Piazza. Catch me, catch KB London, catch your boy Sutton. Yes, we sir. just found out a lot about performing as RMRP. We'll be doing three sets. We got DJ Sosa in the building. Make sure you grab your tickets from the link in my bio on my Instagram. You could also get your tickets personally, physically, from any of the artists. We got them in hand. Though if you want to get it online, we do have a promo code RMRP. That's promo code RMRP for $5 off your ticket. We got a spring and summer merchandise lineup out now on JustDoy.com. We got shorts, all new t-shirts, tons of colors, and then those sweaters for when it gets a little cold at night. Make sure you go to JustDoy.com, grab you some merchandise today. I'd like to give a huge shout out to Sudden for joining us this week on the podcast. Yes, sir. You can find Sudden on all platforms at S-U-D-D-N, capital N, drop the E, S-U-D-D-N, Sudden. Yes, sir. I like that. We, we come, we, Where'd you come up with that real quick? We infected, we, we infected the industry very, very suddenly. Oh. It's gonna, it's, gonna, it's gonna happen just like, you know what I'm saying? Okay. From the whole Stewart Story and RMRP team, stay safe, stay blessed, and stay up. Peace. <laughs> Nice to meet you, my name's Stuart and you can find me with the riches.